And welcome back. So unveiling the throne room, a theologic, a theological and symbolic analysis of Revelation chapter four. Before we get into this, start out with a really quick prayer. We're going to ask the Lord, name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we're going to ask the Lord to shine into hearts, our lovely Master, the pure light of your divine knowledge. And own up the eyes of our mind, and that we may understand your teachings in the scripture. Help us to apply what we learn that they're having conquered simple desires. We may pursue the spiritual way of life, thinking and doing all the things that are pleasing to you. Your Christ, your God, your life, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, the sages. Amen. The Lord's our shepherd. All right, welcome back. So great is his faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Christ is truly, our, is truly in our midst. The true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. It's my pleasure to bring you all God's word each and every day. So this is going to be a quick overview of Revelation chapter 4. Okay, I have a more comprehensive study, but because my allergies are kind of bothering me today, got a little bit of a cough too. Going to try and make this really quick. Right? So do me a favor and go to your description boxes. Click on that link. Right? You'll see the link. It'll say link to full study guide. Right? You'll see that link, click on it, and it'll pull up the study guide you can follow along. There's a lot of sources in here, right, that we're not going to get to today, but I want you all to look at that because it's all there for you. I have it all done. But we're just going to do a really, really quick overview. There's only 11 verses, chapter 4, so we're going to break it down like we normally do. So let me get my screen shared over, right, and then we'll get to this. All right. All right, you should see everything. So Revelation chapter four, the throne room of heaven. So here's like a, a quick kind of overview or introduction to, to what we're about to read. So Revelation chapter four, it's a celestial vision of God's throne room. So Revelation chapter four, is a celestial vision of God's throne room. It's a heartbreaking journey that unveils the profound divine majesty and sovereignty that form the bedrock of the entire narrative of the book of Revelation. This chapter, a pivotal transition from the messages to the seven churches to the unfolding astrological events, underscores the, the centrality of worship the ultimate authority of God over all creation, leaving readers in awe of his, of his grandeur. The imagery in Revelation 4 is rich with symbolic elements that have intrigued and inspired theologians and believers for centuries. The Apostle John describes a scene filled with vivid colors, heavenly beings, and a perpetual worship, all, center, all centered around the throne of God. These heavenly beings are often interpreted as angels or other celestial entities. And their presence in the vision of God's throne room in Revelation 4 carries a symbolic significance. This chapter provides a majestic depiction of divine worship and sets the stage for ensuring judgments and redemptive acts revealed in, su in the subsequent chapters. In this study, Unveiling the Throne Room, we will dwell into the theological implications and the symbolic meanings embedded in this extraordinary vision. By examining, <coughs> by examining the scriptural context, the historical and cultural backgrounds, and the theological themes, we aim to reveal the profound truths about God's nature, sovereignty, and the worship that he rightly deserves. This analyst will deepen our understanding and inspire greater appreciation for the depth of Revelation chapter 4 and its significance within the broader biblical narrative. So we see in chapter, here right here, chapter 4 and verse 1, it says, After these things I looked and behold the door standing open in heaven. And first a voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. So here we go. So right there, the phrase after this, right? Let's kind of zoom in now. 
so not too much. But this the phrase after this, right at the end, right? It introduces a new phase there in John's vision, but should be but should be understood within the broader narrative context. It marks a shift in focus from earthly messages to the seven churches to a heavenly perspective, revealing God's sovereign plan. The single door and the heavenly perspective. There John describes seeing a door standing open in heaven, symbolizing access to divine revelation of an open door. It echoes significant biblical passages. Here, divine access refers to the ability to perceive or understand divine truths or, rev or revelations, often through visions or other supernatural means. And we, we can find examples like in Genesis chapter 1, verses 7 through 8. Right? So if you click on that, on the study guide, you'll see there in Genesis chapter 1, verses 7 through 8, the creation narrative describes the ferment separating the waters above and below, establishing a division between heaven and earth. John's vision of an open door suggests a breach in this division, allowing a glimpse into the heavenly realm. In Genesis chapter 28, verse 17, Jacob's dream of a ladder reaching heaven with angels ascending and descending signifies a connection between the earthly and divine realms. John's open the door mirrors this divine access. In Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1, there you'll see the vision of Ezekiel, the heavens opening and seeing divine vision and paral that parallels John's experience in open door and the subsequent revelations. Mark chapter 1, verse 10, at Jesus' baptism, the heavens open and the spirit descends, signifying divine approval and revelation. This moment of divine un unveiling is akin to John's vision. Even in Acts chapter 7, verse 56, there Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, sees the heavens open and Jesus standing at the right hand of God, indicating a direct view into the divine realm. The call to come up, right? The call to come up here. So the call to come up and its theological implications. John's voice, come up here, echoes God's invitation to Moses in Exodus chapter 19, verse 24, to ascend Mount Sinai where Moses receives divine revelation and the law. This ascent signifies approaching God's presence and gaining insight into his will. Comparative text to, the, to this type of literature. First Enoch chapter 14, verse 14. E Enoch's vision of the heavens and, and the gray house with a door opens, door opens to him, paralleling John's access to heavenly mysteries. Even in the Testament of Levi chapter 5, verse 1. Levi describes his vision of the heavens opening of the, of the divine throne, reinforcing the theme of heavenly access and revelation. Conclusion here to verse 1. It's a pivotal point, linking John's initial vision with unfolding astrological narrative. The after this phrase signifies a transition in John's visionary experience, not a strict, not a strict order, as in the chapters 1 through 4. The door symbolizes divine access, echoing significant biblical passages depicting heaven and earth's connection and the call to come up here. It invites John and the readers to witness God's sovereign plan from a heavenly perspective. Through these connections, here in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, is setting the stage for the profound theological and symbolic revelations that follow, improvising God's majesty and the ultimate fulfillment of his divine purposes. Picking up in verse 2, immediately I was in the spirit. Behold, a throne set in heaven, and one set on the throne. And he who sat there was like jasper and sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. <coughs> so here we go. The throne and its occupant. There, John, <coughs> John's vision immediately brings him in the spirit before heavenly throne, symbolizing God's supreme authority and majesty. The throne, which is a central image mentioned, so it's mentioned over 40 times, Revelation, is, signify, is signifying <clears throat> divine rule and judgment. The symbol of the throne in biblical literature often represents the seat of divine authority and power and is mentioned in Revelation chapter 4, underscoring God's sovereignty in the narrative. <laughs> biblical parallels and description of the throne. Several biblical passages offer parallel vision of God's throne. 
In 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 19, Macchia sees the Lord sitting on a throne with the host of heaven standing by, improvising God's sovereign rule and the celestial court. In Psalms 47, verse 8, God reigns over the nations from his holy throne, declaring his kingship over all creation. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1, Isaiah's vision of the Lord on his throne, high and lifted, surrounded by seraphim, underscores God's holiness and glory. Even in Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 25 through 27, Ezekiel sees the throne of sapphire and a figure with the appearance of glowing metal, depicting God's radiant glory and presence. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 9, there Daniel's vision includes thrones set in place and the Ancient of Days taking his seat, illustrating divine judgment and eternal sovereignty. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 34, Jesus refers to heaven as God's throne, affirming his sanctity and God's supreme authority in matthew chapter 23 verse 22 jesus speaks of swearing by heaven god's throne further improvising its sacredness the radiant appearance so john describes one seated on the throne as having the appearance of jasper and carnelian or sardius depending on what version you have right these precious stones signify god's brilliance and purity Jasper, likely a clear crystal-like stone symbolizing God's purity and holiness. The carnelian, sardius, a red stone, possibly representing God's judgment, God's justice and righteous judgment. The emerald, rainbow. Around the throne is a rainbow resembling an emerald. Unlike the multicolored rainbow of Genesis, this emerald rainbow suggests a single color, symbolizing aspects of God's character and covenant. The emerald rainbow in Revelation 4 is unique, is a unique symbol that carries its significance and its use in the con in the in this context, suggesting a specific aspect of God's character or covenant, covenant that is being improvised. Early Christian writers, such as Victorinus Petul, saw the rainbow as a symbol of divine grace surrounding God's throne, highlighting his mercy and covenant with humanity. In, in 1 Enoch, chapter 14, verses 18 through, through 19, Enoch's vision describes the great glory sitting upon the throne, surrounded by fiery holes and, and a brilliant light, echoing the majestic and awe-inspiring nature of God's throne in Revelation. Even in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11, at the final judgment, John sees a great white throne, and the earth and sky flee from his presence, signifying the ultimate authority and purity of God's judgment. Here, these... These verses depict the throne room of God, combining imagery from multiple scriptural sources to improvise his supreme authority, holiness, and the majesty of his presence. The throne's brilliance and precious stones and emerald rainbow collectively convey God's internal sovereignty, justice, and mercy. This, this vision draws believers into a deeper understanding of God's nature, inviting all in worship while reinforcing the con the continuality of his divine plan from Genesis to Revelations. Verses four through seven. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold in their heads. And from their throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne there was a sea of glass, like crystal. In the midst of the throne and around around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second living creature like a cat, and the third living creature had a face like a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. <laughs> so the 24 elders, the 24 elders seated around the throne represent a key element in John's vision, symbolizing authority and worship in the heavenly realm. In Revelation chapter 7, verse 4, the number 24 could be linked to the 12 tribes of, to the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles representing the fullness of God's people, both Old and New Testament believers. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 28, Jesus tells the apostles they will sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel, suggesting a foundational role in God's kingdom. In Revelation chapter 5, verse 14, in Revelation chapter 11, verse 16, in chapter 19, verse 4, these elders frequently fall and worship before God and the Lamb, indicating their role in leading heavenly worship. 
In Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, chapter 5, verse 9 through 10, <coughs> and chapter 11, verses 17 through 18. Their songs of praise acknowledge God's sovereignty, his act of creation, his redemptive work, reflecting the universal scope of God's reign and salvation. The sea of glass, the sea of glass before the throne, resembles crystal symbolizing purity and calm. It serves as a platform from God's throne and reflects his, transcend his transcendence and majesty. In Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 23 through 26, there you'll see Ezekiel's vision include a ferment like a crystal spread out above the heads of the living creatures. Under God's throne, underscoring the connection between heaven and earth and God's overarching sovereignty. The host of angels. The multitude of angels surrounding the throne highlights the grandeur of heavenly scene. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 10, there you'll see Daniel's vision of vast multitudes serving before God's throne parallels the innumerable host in Revelation, emphasizing the majesty and impotence of God. The four living creatures. The four living creatures symbolize all creation, each representing different aspects of God's creative order and his presence. In Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 4 through 20, there you'll see Ezekiel's vision include four living creatures with similar descriptions, symbolizing the strength, majesty, and omniscience of God. Each beast represents a different facet of creation. The lion, wild animals, the ox, do domestic animals, the man, humanity, the eagle, birds. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 2, Isaiah's vision includes seraphim with six wings, continuously praising God's holiness, indicating the perpetual worship and service to God in his presence. Even early Christian commentators often viewed four living creatures as symbols of the four gospels or the entirety of creation, offering praise to God. They reflect the cosmos under God's rule, encompassing all forms of life and demonstrating the comprehensive nature of his kingdom. Revelation chapter 4, verses 4 through 7 is offering us a profound vision of the heavenly throne room, depicting the worship and authority surrounding God. The 24 elders represent the collective people of God, while the sea of glass and the host of angels underscore his purity and omptiness. The four living creatures symbolize all creation, acknowledging God's dominion and role as the creator and sustainer. The vision, rich with biblical symbolism, invites believers to recognize the, the, majesty, the, the majesty and sovereignty of God and his encompassing rule over all existence. In verse 8, it says, The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is, who was and is and is to come. <coughs> The six wings, the four living creatures, symbolize, symbolize the readiness and swiftness to serve God and their reverence and all in his presence. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 2, you'll see Isaiah's vision. The separum has six wings, two, co two, co two covering their faces, two covering their feet, and two for, two for flying. This indicates their humility before God's holiness, readiness to serve in continuous worship. <laughs> In Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 6, there you'll see Ezekiel describe the cherubim with four wings, highlighting their mobility and divine service. The two additional wings in Revelation of, in Isaiah emphasize the creature's profound worship and readiness to ex execute God's will. The full eyes around and within. The description of creatures being full of eyes signifies, signifies their vigilance, knowledge, and awareness of God's works and purposes outwardly and inwardly. In Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 18, you'll see Ezekiel's vision include wills full of eyes, representing God's omniscience and the persuasive presence of his spirit. The eyes of the living creatures in Revelation symbolizes comprehensive insight and unceasing vigilance in God's service. They do not rest day or night. The unceasing worship of living creatures underscores the internal nature of divine admiration and service in psalms 103 verse 19 through 22 there you'll see the psalm the psalm praises the lord's sovereign rule and calls all his work all all his works and ho hosts 
all his workers and hosts to bless him continuously, reflecting the perpetual praise in heaven. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, there Paul tells all believers to pray without ceasing, paralleling, paralleling the unending worship of living creatures and serving as a model for continual devotion and praise to God. The hymn, Holy, 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 right? This repeated holy in the hymn emphasizes God's supreme holiness from all creation. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3, in Isaiah's vision, the separate proclaimed holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory, echoing the internal recognition of God's holiness and glory by the heavenly beings. In 1 Clement, chapter 34, verse 6, an early Christian commentary, this early Christian text affirms God's holiness and glory, encouraging believers to join in the heavenly praise. It reflects the, the, the continuality of worship in the early church to the eschatological vision and revelation. Early church fathers and orthodox theologians view the six wings and the numerous eyes as, symbol as symbolic of the creatures, complete readiness and divine insight. The continuous of holy, holy, holy is the ultimate expression of God's transcendence. The orthodox tradition improvises the, lit the liturgical and mystical aspects of worship, sees the unceasing praise as a reflection of the eternal liturgy in heaven, calling believers to participate in this heavenly worship through their prayers and services. Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, presents a vivid image of four living creatures in the perpetual worship around God's throne. Their six wings denote their reverent readiness, while their eyes symbolize divine vigilance and insight. Their unending praise underscores the eternal nature of worship in God's presence. The hymn, Holy, 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 highlights God's absolute, absolute holiness and, and everlasting existence. This vision invites believers to recognize God's con continual and all encompassing worship, urging them to join in his heavenly adoration, reflecting on timeless nature of divine praise and service. And as we finish up, right, it says, whenever the, the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created. So the living creatures praise in verse nine, the living creatures continuously offer glory, honor, and thanks what to God, devising his internal nature and sovereign rule. The elders response, verse 10. <coughs> the 24 elders rep are representing the redeemed people of God. And their response and, and response. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um the 24 elders represent the redeemed people of God and respond to the creature's praise by falling down before the throne. This act of prostration signifies a deep reverence and submission to God's supreme authority. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse, verse 42, you will see Elijah in a posture of profound humility and prayer. He bows down to the ground with his face between his knees, illustrating a physical expression of worship and supplication. This connection highlights the elders' similar posture of prayer and complete submission to God's majesty. The elders casting their crowns before the throne symbolizes the acknowledgement that their authority and victory come, come solely from God. It is a gesture of humility and recognition, recognition that God alone is worthy of ultimate honor and power. As we get ready to close out in verse 11, the elders' hymn praises God for his role as creator. They declare God's worthiness to receive glory, honor, and power, acknowledging that all creation exists by his will. This hymn also underscores God's absolute sovereignty and the purpose, the purposefulness of creation, aligning with orthodox theology's emphasis on God as the creator and sustainer of all life. Ancient Christian commentary. Early Christian writers such as those of the patriotic tradition often interpret these verses as depicting the proper response of creation to the creator. They have advised the themes of divine sovereignty, creation's dependence on God and humility and worship God's 
majesty demands. St. Irenaeus highlighted the role of creation reflecting God's glory and the appropriate response of worship and thanksgiving. Even St. John Chrysostom focused on the humility of the elders and casting their crown, seen as an example of Christians to attribute all their victories and achievements to God. Beautiful. In Orthodox theology, it deeply resonates with the passage, improvising continuous and humble worship of God. The liturgical practices of the Orthodox Church with their rich use of hymns and physical gestures of prayer, such as bowing and prostration, reflect the worship described right there in Revelation chapter 4, verses 9 through 11. So verses 9 through 11 here in Revelation 4 presents a profound worship scene in the heavenly throne. The living creature's continuous praise highlight, continuous praise highlighting God's internal nature. While the 24 elders Prostation and casting of crowns demonstrate deep humility and recognition of God's supreme authority. The elders, him, the, the, the uh, I'm sorry, the elders, my throat is really sore. The, the elders, him, the elders, him, praises God as the creator and sustainer of everything. This vision calls believers to a life of humility, humble worship, acknowledging God's sovereignty and participating in the eternal praise of his glory and that's where i'll end hope you've all enjoyed this it's really a quick breakdown all right so we're going to close out now guys thank you all again for following all right you all have a blessed day thank you all again i'm out <laughs>